we're going to talk about the Air Now app. There's been more sort of awareness about air pollution and air quality recently because of the um, Canadian wildfires that brought in that really bad air quality, that haze that we saw over the summer. Um, so I just wanted to give you some tools or a tool to uh, gauge air quality so you can sort of design your outdoor activities around that in order to stay healthy. So the app we're going to be talking about is the Air Now app. It's free. It's run by the Environmental Protection Agency. So it's a government app, but it gives local data that's sort of brought in from different local sites. So the data that you're going to get from it is going to be local New York data. And what they do is they use this color-coded system to tell you whether air quality is healthy or unhealthy at any given moment. And you can think of that color-coded system, which we'll go into a little bit more, kind of like a stoplight. So green means go, red means halt, and you take some precautions from there. And this is based on an index that you might hear talked about called AQI, which is the air quality index. And that's what those color codes mean. So they each line up with a different number to say, you know, how healthy the air is at any given moment. I actually found out about this app because because of the wildfire smoke that we had that was coming down from Canada in the summer. But there are lots of things that can contribute to poor air quality. And I wanted us to keep in mind as climate change is occurring, that that affects our air quality and can affect our air quality in ways that we might not have seen in the past, or we might not have been paying attention to. The changes are going to be different. And so it's good to track this just to make sure we're outside when it's healthy to be outside and we're taking precautions when it's a little less healthy. So why do you need to know about air quality? I was just sort of saying this, but some people are more sensitive to air pollution. They can have um, more profound health effects for them um, in the short term and the long term. So for people who have any of these following um, conditions or fall into any of these categories, even a moderate AQI, so a moderate index in that yellow range, which we'll look at again in a minute, can cause health risks. And those sensitive groups include people with heart disease, people with any kind of lung disease, especially asthma and COPD, older adults, children and teenagers. And the reason children and teenagers are more at risk with uh, poor air quality is because their lungs are smaller and they're actually taking in more air at a time than adults do. People who are pregnant, minority populations, and that's just based on sort of health disparities in that we've seen, you know, for multiple different kinds of illnesses and chronic syndromes. And then in people who are working outdoors for long periods of time. Those are people that should maybe take precautions when, you know, before the general population because they may be more sensitive to air pollution. Once that AQI hits really high levels, like some of the ones that we saw in the summer, everybody needs to take precautions at that point because it can be damaging to everybody's health, even if you're not in one of these groups. So this is a little bit of like the scientific end of it. AQI is, what it really measures is two things. It's ozone and this thing called PM2.5. And what PM2.5 is, is these tiny, tiny particles in the air that can come from metals or they can come from things burning, right? So they're kind of like ash, they're particles of smoke. That's why we saw that orange haze with the Canadian wildfires. And just to give you an idea, so <laughs> this picture here is kind of funny. It's this big long thing is the size of a human hair. These right here are sand like it would be on the beach. What you see here, these blue ones are PM10. So they're bigger than those PM2.5 particles. These are like dust, pollen, mold, things that you can have sort of that uh, allergic reaction to, but that your body has some, you know, defenses to fight off. The thing about PM2.5, and you'll see, you know, four of those fit into one of these PM10s here. They're really, really small. And the reason that those can be so dangerous is because our body doesn't have particularly good systems for fighting off particles that small. And if you're in one of those groups that we mentioned before, that can be even more true for you. So just to give you an idea of what it is we're talking about. So between these PM 2.5, they're also called fine particles. So you might hear them called that as well, fine particulates. Between that and ozone, that's what AQI really is measuring. Most of you, if you look at things like your weather app, you should be able to see allergy forecasts, which is more like your dust and pollen and stuff like this. This is more these chemicals, these sort of man-made chemicals that are in the air. Okay, so how do you download Air Now? You're going to follow the steps like you do to download all the other apps we've talked about before. This is available both in the Play Store and the App Store, and it looks quite similar whether you have an Android or an iPhone. So what you're going to do is look up Air Now in your Play Store or the App Store. 
And what you'll see is something that says EPA's Air Now. So that's the Environmental Protection Agency. The icon for it should look like this. So if you want to download it, you should click this button that says install. Once you've clicked install and the little wheel's gone around to download it, you should have that button that says install should turn into one that says open. And you want to go ahead and do that to open it. Go to your App Store or Play Store, look up Air Now, find this one, click install, and then click open once the button turns to open. All right, so once you have opened it, if you have your location on your phone turned on, it should automatically go to your zip code. So it should give you your local data if you already have that turned on on your phone. If you don't, it's going to ask you for your zip code just so it can make sure that it's giving you the right information for your location. So go ahead and put in your zip code if you don't have location turned on. And that's fine. You won't have to do that every time. When you get on, it should just default to the zip code you put in the first time. So how do you understand this forecast? Like I said, it's kind of like a stoplight. All right, so green means good. Green means anyone can go outside. You're fine. The air quality is not a problem. All right. And then you get all the way over here to this very dark red, which is hazardous, where everyone needs to take precautions. Like we were saying before, the groups that we mentioned, the sensitive groups, may want to take some precautions over here in the moderate area. They would want to take precautions in the orange area where it says unhealthy for sensitive groups. But again, any of these reds, everyone should try and sort of limit their time outdoors, take some precautions. There also are tips about that in the app as well. But just so you know, green is good, good to go. Moderate, if you are in one of those sensitive groups, you might want to take some precautions. Uh, orange, if you're in a sensitive group, you do want to take precautions. And then everybody needs to take precautions over in these red areas. Okay, so again, we're looking at the forecast from September 8th. So then the AQI was in the yellow zone. Like I said, you generally, most people don't need to take any precautions there. But if you are very sensitive to air pollution, here are some things you could do when the AQI is in that yellow zone. You can reduce your activity level. So if you do go outside, you know, maybe walk instead of run or walk slowly or do a little less exerting exercise there. Limit the amount of time you're outdoors. So instead of, you know, walking around for half an hour, maybe do 15 minutes. Wear an N95, one of those white cup masks if you're outdoors. The blue ones don't do much for this PM 2.5. So if you are going outside and you want to wear a mask to protect yourself from poor air quality, especially when it gets into that red zone, wear one of those white masks, okay? The N95, not the blue one. If you have a blue one, it's probably better than nothing, but really the white ones are the ones that filter out those um, PM2.5 particles. You can consider closing your windows at home, right? So you're not getting that polluted air coming into your house. And if you do have an air purifier, that's a good time to turn it on. Again, if you're really sensitive, you can turn that on in the yellow or orange ranges. If you're otherwise not in those groups, you might want to turn it on when it gets into the red. If you need some sort of tips when you're in the app, or if you forget what you should do given what the level is, you can click on this thing that says details, right? It'll tell you the breakdown of like how much of the air quality right now is based on bad ozone levels and how much is based on bad PM 2.5 levels. That's not going to be a huge deal for most people, because if you're sensitive to one, you're probably sensitive to the other. There's similar ways in which they affect the body, um, but it, it breaks it down for you if that is something that you'd like to see. And then it tells you, like what we talked about, some steps you might want to take to stay healthy given that situation. So here it says, if you're unusually sensitive to particle pollution, consider reducing your activity level or shorten the amount of time you are active outdoors. That'll tell you what steps you may want to consider just to make sure you're not doing further harm to your lungs or your heart. And if you want to see what the AQI looks like in other locations or um, especially nearby, you can click at the bottom of the screen. When you go down to the very bottom, you'll see this uh, icon that says map, um, and that will give you a sense of what the um, air quality looks like around you. So you see on September 8th, we were in the yellow, but if you got out to like, you know, Connecticut, Long Island, you know, these sort of outskirts, they were in the green. All right. So that can give you a sense just of what the overview looks like. You can zoom out and see, you know, larger areas and they'll have their pinpoints that show what their air quality looks like at any given moment. Sometimes you can sort of see the movement of poor quality air in there and it can just give you a sense of maybe what's coming. AQI changes pretty rapidly. That was one of the things that we saw during the wildfires over the summer. 
So remember to check the Air Now app regularly. You can check it just like you check the weather, right? Just to see what it looks like for the day, especially if you're planning on doing anything outdoors, especially if you're planning on doing anything outdoors for a prolonged period of time. That's just a really good thing to know, like knowing the weather, right? If you are experiencing any increase in your symptoms of lung or heart disease, if you find yourself coughing more, wheezing, having chest tightness, more frequent or frequent asthma attacks, shortness of breath, talk to your healthcare provider. This is just sort of guidance for how to hopefully avoid any of that worsening of symptoms. But if you do have that, you do need to reach out to a professional to see what you can do next. Um, if you don't have a um, medical provider right now, you can call 311 and they can connect you directly with one. And it doesn't matter what your immigration status is, your insurance situation, or your ability to pay. Don't hesitate to do that if you do find yourself having some of these symptoms of being affected by air pollution.